Hi everybody, welcome to Working Horse with Jim. Today I want to start rebuilding my wagons. These are my logging wagons. I've got this one right here. I've, I've actually got almost done. All this wagon needed was one bunk. So I'm replacing this one bunk on it and it's just about done. And then I'm gonna get my other wagon in which needs a lot more work. And I'm gonna try and get that done. The wood I'm gonna use in this wag these wagons today is hickory. Now I've had um, a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, Differences of opinion in hickory and as to how well it would work on a wagon like that, this. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about that as this video goes along, but before we start the actual building this wagon, I'm gonna go back to this past winter when I actually cut the hickory tree down that we're gonna be using today. And then we will continue in the sawing process to saw the hickory and then continue on as I make these, redo these wagons. So let's go back to our logging earlier this winter. This is a little scary. Oh, here it goes. Wow, that's a rush. Okay. I see you, Jim, cut lots of trees down, but I don't think he usually lets me stand so close. So to me, that was really interesting. Kind of a rush. This is a hickory tree. Um, we have some hickory around here. Um, this is northern New York, of course, so this, we call this a hickory, but I think in other parts of the country there's hickory trees that are different than this one. So, um, but anyways, this is a hickory. Extremely dense, heavy, heavy, heavy wood. As you saw when I cut this tree down, I had, I had a very, I was very satisfied with my cut, and, uh, but still, it, these fibers hold so good that I still had to, and this tree was leaning right there too, but I still had to pound the wedges to get this to go over because these fibers are so strong that it just would not let it fall down. But anyways, this is a hickory. Um, it's not a very valuable wood on the um, commercial market. Uh, sometimes very hard to even get rid of. I personally would probably keep this for my sawmill because I have some uses for it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do for this tree. It is, I think I marked a 16 footer. And then I think that there is one, two, wait, one, two, three, eight footers. And then a pretty good length of firewood. I may get a pallet log out of this end, but I'm not sure. So anyways, I go come back and back in here and get my chains on these this piece right here before I cut it and I'll probably cut take down that firewood top and probably I don't know either here or that eight footer there and take that at one piece and I'll come back and hitch onto the other butt logs um, together and take them out I got this big stump from a beach I cut before lunch 
and I don't feel like exerting the energy to, to get that out of the way. So I will show you and try to explain what I will actually do here. Oh my. Oh. Okay, because that big beach chunk right in our way. That's exactly, I'm gonna change that. I can get a little closer, I'm gonna change that around. I'm just gonna just stop here, but I can come in. So I'm gonna get the chains on before I cut this. Makes it a lot easier. Ready to roll. Now I'm keeping this chain quite long because I've had it too too short. It would pull this log right up on top of that tire. And we don't want that. A little bit, lady. Careful. Oh, bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Oh, that cap step. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, it's time to saw a hickory log for my logging wagons. Um, we had um, talked a little about, about hickory earlier on a video and uh, I actually asked your input as to how well that would work for a wagon. Um, I know hickory is extremely strong, um, but a lot of people told me it will not take the weather very well, and this could very possibly be true. Um, I am going to coat it with old motor oil after I get it done, so hopefully that will allow it to take the weather better. And because it's so strong, I really want to use it. So I'm going to use it for, I need two stringers. That will be four by eight by 16s. And then a bunch of uh, cross pieces, my bunks. And they are, uh, what are they? Three and a half by five inches. And then they'd be about seven feet long. And so I brought this one hickory in. I, I cut several 16 foot hickory. This is actually an 18 foot hickory. Um, but a lot of the hickory that I cut split on the ends a lot. And this one has not. But this is actually an 18 foot hickory, which is good because this butt log, I'm a little bit concerned with it. It's got some um, lines right there and I'm just afraid there's gonna be a little bit of problems. It has split a little bit also. So I'm thinking by at the 16 foot mark, it should be good. I'm gonna run you out and show you a couple of my logs that had split so bad out on the log pile. So here's a couple of the hickory, there's a beach right there, but there's a hickory there and see how it's split. And then there's one hickory right there, another one right there.
Okay, this first wagon is all done. The new bunk is on. And the bunk, just so you know, is five inches wide and it's only three and a half inches thick. I would prefer it being four inches thick, but I just happen to have a whole bunch of these bolts and that go through the bunk and the stringer. And the stringer is a four by eight, so it takes a, that bolt works fine, so I, I just soon keep it at that size. And I think the three and a half has worked well over the years. So what I've done to potentially keep this from splitting is I have two different kinds of stake irons. The stake irons is this piece of steel here that the stake post goes in to hold my logs in place. And so this particular one is just for a round piece of chunk of wood to first stake. My back ones are the old type that just go around the bunk and are bolted in place, but you have to make cut a stake to fit this because it's kind of round here and then the flat side here. So I just don't like these so well because it just takes more time. If you lose a stake, it's so much easier just to ground, grab a, a tree, a pole, you know, two feet long that will drop into that, the stake iron here. But anyways, both this front one and the rear one, they connect by going into the side of the bunks. So because of that, when pressure is put against this stake, let me just get a stake. So here's just a, an old stake that we'll use. And so when the pressure from the logs is pushed against these, especially on the top part of these stakes, it puts a lot of, tremendous amount of pressure on this, actually on the bunk itself. And by the way these bolts are, it's more apt to split right where the bolts are. So that's why I always put a, a bolt right here to go down through with a big washer on to squeeze this piece tight together so it's less apt to split along this bolt line. So my other wagon, the stake irons are just a little bit better. So I'm gonna get this one out of here, get the other one in and start working on that. And then at some point I will try to remember to explain the differences between the stake irons. Okay, so I got the wagon in that I have to redo completely. So just a little um, explanation of what I call this stuff. The two, the long beams that go down the whole length of them, they're 16 foot long, four by eights. You have one on each side. Those are called the stringers. And then these are the bunks, the, the four that go crossways. You'll see that I actually have three stringers in here. I have two on this side. I think it was, it was last summer at some point. I realized this stringer was pretty well busted. It was gonna fall apart. So I chose to, instead of redoing the whole wagon at the time, I chose to just slide another stringer beside this one. And I actually used banding from my, from my lumber bander and tied that together to hold that to keep it from breaking as I continued using it. As you can see, I have four bunks on this wagon. This is a tandem wagon and it's 16 feet long. With the four bunks, I have them spaced so they're approximately four feet from bunk to bunk, although this one's a little bit different, I gotta tweak it a little bit when I redo it. Um, but I want my forks are, I want to have plenty of room to get my forks in between all three openings. And so that's why I want approximately four feet to be able to do that. Somebody asked or suggested I put in six so I could haul round bales better. This is my logging wagon, although I do haul round bales with it sometimes. It is per the purpose is, it for, is for logs and not for, for round bales. So, but at least I can do both if I want to. So I will go about tearing this all apart, putting in my new stringers, and then I'm not sure if I'm even gonna replace the two bunks with the stake irons on, because they're Actually, not that bad. I must have replaced them not too long ago. The front and the back bunks I will replace, but I may not replace the, the two, this one here and this one here because they're really not too bad. And I like, I like to get as much use out of them as I can before I replace them. Even though I've already cut the, the wood for them. The wood can sit and dry and they're still perfectly fine in a year or two years from now. 
So let me explain about these steak irons while it's fresh in my mind. I'm gonna pull this steak out of here. Oops, it's stuck, there it goes. Okay, so. All four of these steak irons are the same. And I made them because my bunks are three and a half inches thick. So I have a piece of steel here. I didn't do this, a friend of mine did, but I have a piece of steel here and a piece of steel on the bottom. And then we welded this pipe onto that and we ran a piece of steel across the bottom so the stake would drop in only as far as that steel. So by doing this, the, the most chance of splitting this bunk is crossways like I told you about in the other, for, on the other wagon. And that is pretty more prone to do that because the bolts go in the side. By having the bolts go down through the top and bolt a nut with a nut on the bottom, that ties this together and I think when I, I could put a bolt through here, I probably should, but it's, these are quite a few years old and they have not split at all. So there's just not a lot of force back and forth. Most of the force is with a, the stake, with a log hitting up here, or me hitting it with a, with a log, pushing backwards to make that split at the halfway point. So it's not quite so crucial. So I don't know if I even bother, but those stringers have to be fixed. So. I'm gonna tear this all apart and see about getting them thick. One sort of major issue I have when I tear these, these racks apart is this bolt that goes down through the bunk and then down through the stringer. It takes a pretty good sized drill to do it with, to make the hole. I've got a nice long drill that I use, but it's almost, I think it's a 5 8 drill and it's not even quite big enough for this bolt so a lot of times I have to pound it through. And so when I do, when it comes to tear it apart, it's really hard to pull it apart. A lot of times I'll just take a chainsaw and cut it here, cut it here and cut it here, and then it's easy to get out. But then the bolt is still in the stringer and it's a question of getting that out of there. And if the stringer's no good, I will actually cut the stringer the same way to get that bolt out. But I, I don't want to cut this bunk if I could possibly help it because I want to just reuse this one. Okay, let's go about our work and see what happens. I don't know how these bolts are, but so often we talk about sustainability. I believe these bolts have been around for this particular wagon for probably 20 years. I've replaced the wood on this, I don't know, four or five times. Same bolt. Different wood, same bolt. Sustainability. We have a young man named London helping us out a little bit after school. He's trying to earn some money for a mission trip since we had to cut all this stuff up and we're going to actually use all these pieces for firewood. So one more sustainability thing, we're utilizing all this um, junk that is going to go into our furnace to heat our house, to heat our wood kiln. And so that's, that's great. So I'm going to pull this wagon out and put the stringers on and we'll continue the project. Okay, we got it done. All new stringers, two stringers down the, on the bottom. I did end up with leaving this, put this old bunk on there and this old bunk on here. It's still good and solid, so I have no problem with that. Put a new bunk on the very back, the very back here, and then another bunk on the front. 
So, I'm very curious to see how this hickory holds out. Even this morning, I had a guy stop in a friend of mine and I asked him if he'd ever used hickory. He says, yeah, and I'd never use it again. So, he said it split so bad. So, I don't know. I'm going to find out. I was going to put old oil on these right off, but they realized as I was working with them, they're just so green and so wet, they're not going to suck up any oil or not much oil. So I'm just going to wait, and this summer I might get time to put the old oil on. But you know how one of those jobs go. You want to put it on, then come summer you're busy and it hasn't bothered, so you don't bother doing it. So I may or may not. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will give you an update as time goes on as to how well this hickory holds up. And uh, you guys have a great day.